Hey everyone, this is the addendum to my Luke Chin video, how to make Asian meatballs video. And in this video, I'm just gonna be squeezing the balls. And so you can take your time and watch it as long as you need to, to get the hang of it. Um, so I have a lot, so you'll have a few minutes of, of time to watch and perfect your technique. So if you're making this, you can watch as you make. Okay, it's one of those things that's easier shown than described. So, you know, it's so that you don't have to keep rewinding the other video. And also when you're squeezing this, be aware of the size. That's a little large, but that's okay. Okay, and see how I'm sweeping across the long side of the lukchin so that it would be round. And sometimes you're like squeezing, squeezing, and you're like, okay, forget it. This is a complete mess. So you just start over. You just start over with a new handful. And don't worry about the stuff that's getting squeezed off the bottom. That's inevitable. It's going to happen. If your spoon starts to feel sticky, um, just dip it in water. Maybe you need to clean it off every once in a while, just so... Really bad. So I, I'm going to address again that you should wear gloves even if you do wash your hands really well it just becomes really difficult to uh, clean your hands afterwards especially if you've got nails because all the pork paste is gonna be like all up in your nails and then you're gonna have to use a brush to get it all off it's just so much easier to use a uh, latex gloves for this commercially they have a machine that just bloop, 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 bloop them out um, but this is how they do it old school. So the old school handmade meatball will always have a little bit of like a, a line that forms that's like the line that forms when you nick it off. That's how you kind of, and it's also not going to be perfectly round, right? So that's how you tell like homemade meatballs versus commercially made meatballs. And usually it just takes me a couple of squeeze. The first squeeze is not always smooth. I always feel like the, the second squeeze is usually good, but I usually do three. For some reason, I just feel like two is a little too soon. I'm not quite prepared. The third one is like, okay, that looks good. Yeah. And again, your water should be hot, but it shouldn't be bubbling because you want these to cook ever so gently to keep their shape. Ah! I lost the ball. <laughs> That's okay. Satisfying. Very satisfying. Um, try not to stick your spoon into the water. I mean, I, I've done that a few times. What happens then is it cooks the pork bits that are stuck on the spoon and then the spoon becomes a little more sticky. And then it's a pain to clean, right? So just drop them in. Try not to dip the spoon in the water. I wonder how long this video is going to be. And I wonder how many people are going to watch this entire thing of me just squeezing balls, meatballs. So I also want to add that um, I should say this in my main video that you can do this with pork, beef, chicken, any pork, beef, chicken, you can stick with this recipe. If you're going to do seafood, I have never made a seafood based one, so I couldn't tell you whether this recipe will actually work. It probably won't. It probably needs a bit of modification for seasoning and stuff. So, but if you want to switch this to beef or chicken, um, totally fine. Chicken, I would go with lean. Beef, I would go with not lean because chicken is quite tender already. If you have fatty chicken, it's only going to be mushy. With beef, it's a very firm meat. If you don't have enough fat, it's going to be too firm. So, and I just, when I've made this a few times, it, it just really depends on, it's a lot of trial and error. Like you try out this brand of ground meat and oh, okay, it's a little too lean. Or maybe you try this other brand and it's a little too mushy. So you just, you know, Take your time. Adam, do you want to try? No. <laughs> really? Yes. Well, I'd have to get it all geared up. And... It's just one glove. Okay. Do you want to try? Okay. I want to show you what it might look like if this is your first time making it. 
The first one will feel like you've completely lost control. You have no idea what to do. Yeah, now take your thumb and roll it over and squeeze. There you go. Yeah, make smaller ones. Those are gigantic. I have big hands. That's true. There you go. Okay, that's good. Do it one more time and then scoop it off with your with the with the spoon. <laughs> Ta -da! It's not bad. It's it's slightly misshapen, but yeah. Okay. Keep going. You can't even tell it's mine. No. Yeah, that's not bad. See, it's okay. not, it's Maybe not as, technique. yeah, it's not as hard as it looks. It's just like when you first do it. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I'm doing too much scraping. And it's not round. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Come on, stop. Why is, it, why is it stopping around when I do it? I think you're not closing I'm... your thumb and finger tightly enough. Like you got to really close, close yeah, close that off so that it pinches. Oh, it. I was just using. Okay, do it again. That one's not. No, that one's not good. Yeah, like you close it off so it's like pinch it off, and then the spoon oh, just... just like cuts it. There you go. Okay, now I now. Pinch it off. Can't do. Close enough. No. There you go. Yeah, it's 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 ballish. <laughs> oh, I made a there discovery. You there you go. Okay, so everybody, if you take your finger and you make do that, rather, I can't squeeze these together. Oh, I see. They were. But if you use your finger, it cuts it Okay, off. okay. That's a good tip. Okay, yay! We did it. Yeah. See? It's totally doable. Position.